fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. It was late at night when Sam Kendall left the ranch of a friend and headed south toward his home in Hawksville. He took a shortcut through a woods. Presently, he saw a campfire and drew rain. Who, 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 who? Might be someone I know camping here. Yeah, I'll have a look, see. Sam didn't see anyone near the fire. Neither did he see the man who sneaked from the sheltering trees and approached his back with an upraised gun. Yeah, there's a horse tied over there. <coughs> I want... The following morning found the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding through the same large forest. It was about one hour past daybreak when they heard a cry. Oh, 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 Did you hear that, Toto? Ah, uh, sound like cry for help. Help me! Help me! Over that way. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. The masked man rode in the direction of the sound with Toto following. In a moment, he came to a small clearing. Oh, 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 easy, oh, easy, Scout. Easy, fellow. A gray horse was tied to a tree, and a man lay on the ground near the cold ashes of a campfire. The man's hands and feet were tied. He wore the star-shaped badge of a lawman. He must have a, him lawman. Yes, yeah, get a canteen, Toto. I'll ah. cut the ropes. Uh, mask. Great guns, another outlaw. I'm not an outlaw, Sheriff. And I don't care who you are. Just cut me free and I'll be mighty obliged. Who tied you? And I don't know. I didn't see the pole kid. <laughs> there, your feet are free. Now for the wrist. The critter who tied me stole my horse. For that by Jupiter, he'll hang. Doesn't the gray horse belong to you? Oh, no. There, your hands are free. Yeah. Here, water. Gosh, my hands are numb. No feeling in them. Hold the canteen for him, Toto. Uh-uh. I'll rub his hands to restore the circulation. Uh-uh. Then examine the gray horse, Toto. See if there's a mark of identification. Uh-uh. <clears throat> oh, thanks. It'll do for now. Uh, maybe me fine brand on horse. Would you care to tell me what happened, Sheriff? Well, I don't know why you'd be interested, mister. But you've done a friendly deed. I'd and... like to hear the story. Well, there's not much to tell. I was on my way to Hawksville. That's where I live. And you must be Sam Kendall. Yeah, that's right. How'd you know? I'm familiar with the names of many lawmen. You uh, said you were on the way to Hawksville. Yep. I'd been north of here at the Taggart Ranch. Huh? Jim Taggart's my friend. He wanted to talk to me about some cattle losses. So 
So I went there. I was riding south through this woods when I saw a campfire. Well, I was curious. I came to this clearing to see who was camping. Didn't see anyone. Then I was slugged on the back of my head. Knocked out. You doggone right. Polecat who did it must have been hiding among the trees. Let me examine your head, will you? It doesn't hurt much now. It's all right. Mm, a fair-sized lump on your head. Yeah, I came to, and the fire was burned ambers. I was tied hand and foot. When it got light, I saw that my horse was gone. And I'm all right now. I'll help you to your feet. I'm all right. Good as new. You still have your gun. How about money? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, cash is here, what there is of it. Knife, keys. I well, reckon my horse is all that's gone. Now, must have yes? Gray horse. Plenty lame. Him not carry rider for two, three days. So that's it. That's why that ornery horse thief took mine. It shouldn't be hard to follow the tracks. Your horse was newly shod. You know that? Those marks on the ground make it obvious. Yeah, good at cutting sign, I'll say that. You know, I'm downright curious about you. <laughs> Most people are. If I didn't feel obligated, I'd commandeer your horse and follow that horse thief. I'll follow him for you. Uh, meanwhile, Sheriff, I hope you'll not try to ride that lame horse to town. <laughs> hey, hold on. Why are you so quick to help a lawman? I'm on the side of lawman, Sheriff, and opposed to horse thieves. Easy, steady, big fella. Scout. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. And all gone. Well, looks like I'm walking to Hawksville. Come on, you gray-skinned critter. Can't hold it against you that you're owned by a thief. The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the tracks of the stolen horse eastward to the edge of the woods. There, the trail made an abrupt right-angle turn to the north. After about an hour of riding due north, the masked man and his companion saw a group of nine horsemen approaching from the east. Tonto showed unusual excitement. He must have a wick. Oh, 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 Indians, Tonto. Ah, me know them. Them good friends. Them from Tonto Tide. Oh, is that so? Ah, me not see him for long time. Tonto! <laughs> <laughs> well, they've recognized you. They're certainly glad to see you. Me plenty glad to see them. Tonto's friends wore wide grins of delight as they rode close and drew rein. <laughs> How? Oh. Tonto greeted his friends and introduced them to the Lone Ranger. They exchanged polite formalities, then directed their talk to Tonto. It was fast, persuasive talk with many gestures. The Lone Ranger knew enough of the dialect to know that the Indians were on a wild horse hunt. They wanted Tonto and his masked friend to join them. Tonto finally raised his hand in a gesture for silence. He turned to the Lone Ranger and began... Uh, Kimasabi. Oh, why not join them, Toto? Huh? You know a hunt? I understood some of the talk. It's just as they told you. It'll be like old times to ride with your friends. Will you come? Oh, no, thanks, Toto. I'll stay on the trail of the horse thief. Oh, let me forget him for a minute. Me stay with you. Well, it's not necessary, Toto. Go with your friends. No, no, me stay with you. Catch horse thief. Then maybe join friends in horse hunt. Very well, Toto. Find out where they'll be. Ula, they look up The Indians told of a mountainside where wild horses had been seen grazing. They described the location, then rode away. The Lone Ranger and Tonto continued on the trail north, following the tracks of the horse thief. Tonto, I appreciate your staying with me. I hope we reach the end of this trail before your friends finish their hunt. Well, hunt take long time. Indians first cut down thin tree, then build corral before them round up horses. Hunt take two, three days. Well, Tonto, if we capture the horse thief, there'll be no need for you to waste a full day riding with me to Hawksville and back. Oh, me help you get crook and ropes. Yes, but as soon as he's captured and tied, you go and join your friends. I'll need no help in taking him to the sheriff in Hawksville. I'll try to get back to join you before the hunt's ended. You know place where Indians go? Yes, it's on a hill a few miles north of Taggart's Ranch. It's open range. Oh, maybe Taggart's cattle on open range. Me hope Taggart not make trouble for Indian. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. It was shortly after noon when Tonto's Indian friends reached their destination and made camp a few miles north of Taggart's Ranch. 
The mountainside had been cleared of large trees to provide lumber for the ranch house and other buildings. But there were scattered trees of smaller size. The Indians were cutting and trimming a number of these trees to build their corral when they saw two men approaching from the direction of the ranch. Work stopped. All nine of the Indians watched as Taggart and his foreman rode up the slope and drew rein. What are you redskins doing? Uh, we build corral, then hunt wild horses. Can't you see there's cattle grazing down there at the foot of the mountain? Uh, we not harm cattle. You're not going to do any horse hunting around here. Who are you? I'm Red Barton, the foreman of this ranch. And this is Mr. Taggart, the owner. You're on Taggart land, so clear out. Indian agents say this open range. Oh. He's right about that, Red. The mountainside is open range. We don't want redskins around here, boss. The Indians drew back a few paces and held a low-voiced conference while Taggart and his foreman watched and waited. For all we know, Mr. Taggart, those Indians might be the ones who are stealing your cattle. Well, it's possible. But they don't seem to be troublemakers. Furthermore, Red, we have no legal right to drive them away. We needn't worry about legal rights. There's no law this side of Hawksville, and it's a long ride from here. They finished their powwow. Well, did you decide to clear out? Uh, Indian agents say all right to hunt on mountain. Uh, him also say make no trouble for white men. You hunt around here and you'll have plenty of trouble. We'll bring the cow hands with guns. Uh, uh, not want trouble. We go hunt other place on far side of mountain. <laughs> The spirit of fun was gone. Soberly and silently, the Indians packed their things and rode away. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto found their task increasingly difficult. The ground became harder and the tracks of the horse thief less distinct. Tonto's hope of joining his friends that night diminished as the afternoon advanced. Sunset found the masked man and his companion in a narrow canyon with a floor of almost solid rock. They had dismounted and were walking ahead of Scout and Silver, watching for the scratches on rock of iron horseshoes. Finally, the Lone Ranger stopped. Who's it? Who's Scout? No fella. Toto, we're wasting time. We know the thief entered this canyon. Mm, that's right. He couldn't climb these walls, so he must have kept going ahead. We we'll ride through and look for his tracks at the end of the cut. Easy, steady. Easy, call. Scout. Easy, fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The canyon became narrower and shallower, and twilight deepened. The ground was littered with rocks of all sizes, which made it necessary to slow the horses to a walk. Darkness was gathering when the end of the cut was reached. At this point, the walls were less than two feet high and scarcely five yards apart. Who's over? Who's scout? Tuttle. 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 The Lone Ranger's exclamation was involuntary. The canyon opened into a vast expanse of level plain, carpeted with lush grass. It was a natural basin. The wall was high on all sides, except where it lowered at the gap. Long ago, Tonto, this must have been the bed of a lake. The canyon was its outlet. That's right. There on the ground, the tracks of the horse thief. He turned to the left. He must have... The masked man left his sentence unfinished. His attention was caught by what he saw close to the western side of the basin. Cattle, Tonto, and a campfire. Ah, and me see men there. Look like horse thief. Got friends. This would make a good place to hide stolen cattle. The horse thief may have led us to a gang of cattle thieves. Ah, we go closer? Yes. Those men are close to the cliff that surrounds the basin. From here, we can follow the top of the cliff until we're directly over that campfire. We'll leave the horses here. Easy, steady. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. All right, come on, fellow. Ah. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, 
now to continue. Leaving their horses at ground hitch in the canyon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto set out toward the campfire about a quarter of a mile away. They walked silently through the moonlight following the edge of the cliff that surrounded the basin. Presently, they stopped and lay on the ground. They inched forward until they could peer over the ledge. The campfire and eight men surrounding it were almost directly below, close to the 30-foot cliff. A red-haired man was speaking. Bates, I hope you didn't leave tracks that can be followed. Don't worry, Red. I came through the south camp. It's all rock. Besides, who's to follow me? Sheriff Kendall can't follow his own shadow. And if he could, he wouldn't have a horse to ride. Sam Kendall's a friend of my boss. That's so? Yeah. In fact, he'd been to Taggart's house. He was on his way back to Hawksville when you slugged him. Did that visit have anything to do with stolen cattle? Yes, it did. Taggart's finally realized that his herd is getting smaller. He suspects that rustlers are at work. Does he suspect you? Not for a minute. I rate ace high with the old man. Why shouldn't I? I've been his top hand for ten years. Can't you convince him his cattle is straying over the mountain and getting lost? I tried that, Bates. He just said hogwash. We can't take any more of the Taggart stock. Well, we've only taken about 50 head. Yes, and I've still to see my first dime for working with you. You know the deal, Red. You get paid when I sell the cattle. And I can't move it and sell it till the new brands are healed over. Besides, I don't want to move less than 100 head. Bates, listen to me. That's tin horn stuff. Oh, tin horn, tin horn huh? Well, for a man who's worked 10 years at foreman's pay, you're getting big ideas. That's right, Bates. I have big ideas. Such as? Taking over all the Taggart cattle and the ranch and buildings, a whole shebang. How's that sound? You're either local. You have lots more to say. What if Taggart dies and leaves a will naming me his heir? Is there such a will? I can make one copy in Taggart's handwriting. And some of you boys can witness it. Yeah. Do you think it'd stand up? Sure. Taggart hasn't any relatives. He's told me a dozen times. How about friends? Sheriff Sam Kendall is his only friend, and he's not a close friend. I'll fix it so Kendall gets a few hundred dollars and a horse or two. That'll make the will look genuine. You, uh, you figure on murder? Yes. It'll look like the work of Indians. What Indians? Nine horse hunters. They were on the mountain overlooking the North Range this afternoon. Taggart had a run-in with them. He told all the ranch hands about it when we got back to the house. In fact, I led him to believe those Indians might have been stealing his cattle. The job will have to be done while the Indians are still in the neighborhood. It'll have to be done tonight. That's where you and your men come in, Bates. Tonight? Taggart is alone on the ranch. The cowhands got paid today and rode to Hawksville to spend the night. Oh. We'll all ride to the ranch and do a lot of shooting to spread bullet holes around. We'll make sure one or more of the bullets gets Taggart. Then we'll smash up some furniture and things to make it look like the work of sore-headed Indians. You seem to have it all worked out. I have. I worked out every detail after I thought of the scheme. When did you think of it? When I saw those Indians this afternoon. That's what gave me the idea. To write out Taggart's will? No, but there's plenty of time for that. Well, boys, how's the sound? Depends on what's in it for us. Yeah, that's right. right. All right, Red. Let's discuss terms. We'll make an agreement in writing. And then I know you won't try a double cross after you become owner of the Taggart Ranch. The Lone Ranger signaled Tonto. The two drew back from the edge of the cliff and hurried to their horses. And them crook. Them plan to blame good Indian for murder. We like to crack heads together. Tonto, I'll go directly to the ranch and tell Taggart what we've learned. You get your Indian friends and bring them to the house. Easy, Silver. Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The masked man and his Indian friend headed west and rode together until they were near the Taggart Ranch. There, they separated. Get him up, Scout. Toto headed toward the mountain where he expected to find his friends, while the Lone Ranger turned toward the south and headed for the ranch house. Oh, easy. He turned Silver into the corral where there were several other horses, then crossed a moonlit area and descended the porch steps. The house door opened. I heard your horse, mister. Mast. A tiger died. Get him up, mister. Hi. All right, my hands are up. Now may I tell you why I came here? Uh, turn around. Face the other way while I take those guns. I'm not going to turn around, and you're not going to take my guns. Well, the fall... I came to tell you what I've learned about your stolen cattle. 
and about a plan to murder you. Why, you... I didn't expect gun trouble before I had a chance to explain this mess. So I... Tiger dropped the gun as a chopping blow fell with lightning speed on his forearm. The Lone Ranger shoved the rancher hard. Go inside. You'll pay. I'll, I'll get you off my knee. As Taggart stumbled into the room, bumping into a chair and a table, the masked man picked up the gun and followed. My knee. My arm. What... What'd you do? I struck your gun arm with the side of my hand. You moved so fast. I was reasonably sure I could disarm you before you could cock the gun and fire. Next time you try to cover a man, draw back the hammer of your gun. All right. You've got to drop on me. What's next? You, you gonna shoot me? No, but someone else is planning to shoot you. I came to warn you. Who's planning to shoot me? Your foreman, a man called Red. That's a downright lie. You'll probably say the same about everything else I have to tell you. Save your breath. No, Taggart, no. I'm going to talk and you're going to listen. Less than an hour ago, I saw over 50 head of cattle that had been stolen from you. So you know I lost cattle, eh? Maybe you stole it. No, but I saw the men who did, and Red was with them. Furthermore, those crooks are planning to come here and murder you. Huh? They're probably on the way right now. They may arrive within a few minutes. Hey. All right, I'll start at the beginning. Last night, I found a man fighting. Though minutes were precious, the Lone Ranger told Taggart everything. He summarized the finding of Sam Kendall, the following of the horse thief's tracks, the meeting with Tonto's Indian friends, and the discovery of the stolen cattle and the rustlers in the basin. He finished by detailing Red's plan to murder the rancher and place the blame on the Indians. So Tonto has gone to the Indians. Mister, you talk in a mighty convincing style. But you can't make me believe my friend Red would turn on me. You may believe me when they come here shooting. They? Red and the seven rustlers. You said your friend uh, Tonto has gone to those Indians. Why? You bring them here. They're good Indians, Taggart. They'll fight on our side against the killers. They should be here by this time. You figure I'll let them into this house? Well, I hope so. We'll need their help. Sounds like a fancy scheme to get them in here so they can kill me and take everything I own. If that had been the plan, there'd have been no reason for me to come here ahead of them. They'd have no trouble attacking while you were here alone. If all you said is true, which I still doubt, you've gone to a lot of trouble for a man you never saw before. Why? Because it's a chance to strike a blow at crime. You're not a lawman. No. Who are you? Some people call me the Lone Ranger. Huh? If I believe you're the Lone Ranger, I'll have to believe you told the truth. Which means Red is planning to kill me. Huh? Oh, no. Horses are stopping in front. Several of them. Maybe Tonto has brought his friend. Hey, Mr. Tiger! That's Red. He and his pals. Here before the Indians. Will you step out on the porch? He wants me to step to the porch. Don't do it. I'll see who's with him. I'll look out the window. Don't show yourself! <laughs> what, Ted? Uh... Nearly got you. <laughs> You hadn't pulled me back. Hey, uh, that was Red who fired. I, I saw him. He's in there, boys. Surround the house. And that was Red. The muttering skunk. Here's your gun. Put out that lamp. Uh, look out. Stay back from that window. I'll let them know they have a fight on their hands. You hit someone? In the shoulder. Watch the west side. Uh, right. Yeah, I see one of them. Get him? No, uh, he ducked behind the water trough. I'll try to cover this side in the back of the house. In addition to the water trough, the attackers found shelter behind a huge rock, a pile of lumber and a shed. They were on all sides of the house, and each shot from within brought a quick response. That smashed the lamp on the table. It's a good thing I blew it out. We might have had a fire. We should have help at any moment. You mean the engines you mentioned? Yes, I expected them ahead of the rustlers. You hadn't better count on them. Why? I allowed my foreman to send them away. The masked man made no comment, but his face was grim. He knew that the odds against himself and Taggart were heavy, despite the fact that a couple of the outlaws had been hit and were out of the fight. Both men hurried from window to window, trying to watch all sides of the house. Oh, Taggart! Oh, those ornery pole cats! That double-crossing foreman! Are you badly hit? Oh, shoulder. I can't use my gun. Let's see the wound. Never mind me. Watch the windows. Don't let him get close. Just leave me be, eh? You'll bleed to death if I don't fix this. They'll get close. I'll set fire to the place. Yeah, I'll fix a tourniquet. What's going on? What's he shouting about? Taggart, I heard Tonto's war cry. I hear a lot of war cries. Tonto must have found his friends. They're here to help you. Engines. And fighting on my side. 
Two men in front of the house were quickly shot down by the attacking Indians. Four others who rushed from the sides and rear were quickly taken care of. A few minutes later, inside the house, Red and four other men wore ropes on their hands and feet. And in addition, three of the four were bandaged. Taggart's right arm was in a sling. He held a gun in his left hand. I'm just hoping one of you crooks makes a fast move. It'll be the first time I drilled a man with my left hand. What are you going to do with us? Red, you and your pals are going to jail. The Indians will watch you while I ride to Hawksville and report to the sheriff. J uh, tell Sam his stolen horse is here. And three dead men, including the crook who stole it. Also five live crooks who stole my cattle and tried to kill me. Kimasabi. Yes? We wrap dead men in blankets. Good. Jay Tonto, that crooked foreman of mine drove your Indian friends away. Not right. And that's why them plenty glad to come here and make foreman sorry. But where'd you find them? Me find them far side mountain. Tonto, did you ask the Indians to stay here until the sheriff and his men arrive? Uh, me ask them. And them glad to stay. Glad to help Taggart. Them say Taggart not like foreman. You tell your friends to hunt anywhere they please. Uh, and maybe you want Indians go to Basin, bring back stolen cattle. No, no. My men will do that tomorrow when they're back from town. Sakes alive, your friends have done enough to help me. Save my ranch and save my life. I'll send the Indians in here, Toto. Keep an eye on those crooks. Now, that masked man, if it hadn't been for him... I'd be dead and you'd be riding high. You outsmarted yourself, Red, when you tied up with a horse thief who was being trailed by the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.